Hello everyone and welcome back to my study. And here's Socky Socks, Bernard Socks, come to say hello. What? He's kind of disturbed today because there's cats trying to get into the back garden and to um, share his food indoors and he's not very happy about it. There he is. Oh, here he comes. Oh, okay, Socks, you can sit on my lap. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I hope you're all feeling good today and um, you're ready to look at some more um, bookshelves. Get a cup of tea and, um, and let's have a look at some books. <laughs> Something to explain. Um, these cardboard boxes do not look the best on my shelves, I know. But they're all journals. They're all my journals. Uh, well, not all of them, but that's going back a couple of years. They're not the uh, the nicest thing to have on shelves like that. But they've got to be stored somewhere, and uh, that's where they are. So when I pan around the room like that, that's what the cardboard boxes are. Full of gold knows how many thousands of words of uh, me going on and on. Right, now, here we are. Here's this lovely bookcase in the corner of my room. Just having a look. What's here? These are mostly collections of stories, actually. Uh, science fiction out of this world from the 70s. Philip K. Dick uh, and his collection of stories that includes Beyond Lies the Wub, which is one of those completely brilliant short stories of his. If I was to create a um, a best of collection of all my favourite short stories there ever were, um, it would include that one definitely, which is a proper space opera story, but also one with a, uh, a strange creature in, um, with a, a nice twist at the end. I must have read that when I was about 12 the first time. What else? Over the Rainbow, which is a collection, of Marks and Spencer's St. Michael collection from the 80s, of excerpts from wonderful books. One of those collections of stories that's a kind of uh, a crossroads, if that's the right, the right image, but something that points in all sorts of directions and takes you off to lots of other books. Lots of annuals down here. Star Trek from the um, 70s, reprinting all those wonderful gold key comics that they'd had in America in the 60s. These were, um, well, the most Star Trek-y thing I could imagine as a kid, even more than the TV show. They always seemed bigger and more colorful even than the TV show. What else? Beryl Cook. Uh, books about mysteries. I seem to have an awful lot of those. Mysteries of the Unknown is the classic one, of course. Usborne, 1978. Loads of people have this. Loads of people go on about this. This book of monsters, ghosts and UFOs. One of my favourite things ever. Recently um, reprinted at last. But I've been lucky enough to have this um, in my life for all this time, such a long time. <laughs> Jeff the Talking Mongoose, of course, is the uh, is the thing that I remembered most from this book, the mongoose of the Isle of Man. There he is. <sighs> Subject of a, um, a much looked forward to movie in recent years. Very let down by that, I must say. I could have written that. <laughs> I always think that about things that I don't enjoy enough. Fungus the Bogeyman. Remember this, this was like 77. And one of the books that got passed around at school and talked about and uh, read secretively at school and learned off by heart. Such tiny, tiny print. 
You had to explore a book like this. You had to dig into the corners for the good bits. And it paid study, that's what it was. It rewarded careful study because you knew all the best bits, the rudest bits, the naughtiest bits would be hidden away. It was a great tradition of comic books, comedy books when I was a kid. Monty Python, The Young Ones, Comic Relief, things like that. <clears throat> that would, um, there'd be tie-in books that were just a bit naughty. That was always exciting. That thinking was in my head, I guess, when it came to doing my own panda book. Uh, the panda, the cat and the dreadful teddy, a couple of years ago. What else? It's my favourite book of dinosaurs from when I was a kid. <coughs> the Ladybird Book of Dinosaurs. Oh, look, I bought that for three quid when we went to Hay in 2015 for the Hay Festival. That was a fancy do. <laughs> it was the first time I'd been. Didn't know what to think about it, really. It's a whole load of posh people. Not quite nice in some ways, but not terribly friendly. A bit snooty. These pictures are all imprinted on my mind. I was so glad to get a, a copy of this again. Magic. Uh, sooty. <laughs> when Sooty appeared in his own mystery novels. Somebody told me this. I had no idea and I was completely amazed. Look at these pictures though. With such care taken. This is a piece of tie-in merchandise from the 60s. Produced by, I think, Daily Mirror books. And you can see how they've, they're kind of aping the style of the drawings and the presentation of Enid Blyton's Noddy books. It's done so beautifully though. Uh, Edward Gorey. These are all picture books, I guess. Collectible picture books that sit there, again on the shelf nearest where I sit down to read. So I can pick them up at any given time and resubmerge myself in these stories that I know so well. Such as they are. I mean, some of these things don't have much story at all. The doubtful guest is a creature that turns up, discombobulates everyone in the big house, and then goes away again. It's the kind of quixotic and strange story that Edward Gorey always produced. His funny little cross-hatched books. There's another one, The Iron Tonic. I think... One that I know less well. It's like going into a whole world, a whole familiar world with Gory. You know where you are. Well, <laughs> you kind of know where you are with him. The Perishers, which I'd forgotten about. I bought a whole collection of these. Um, I found a, a stash of them in a shop on Chesterley Street last year. And also some more on eBay. Again, beautifully intricate books. These are the kind of northern English version of the of peanuts. Um, and something I was obsessed with as a kid. Obsessed, that's too much. Something I read and reread over the holidays, usually. Reminds me of the summer holidays from school. And Starblazer. Something else that had slipped my mind. These were wonderful kind of one-off stories, complete in one volume. Two a month were published for about 12 years through the 80s and early 90s. And I dipped into them irregularly. They were a bit butch, really, for me, I guess. They were a bit fighty um, in the way that 2000 AD often seemed. But um, the ones I read, I loved. And the ones I've read since then, I've adored. There's a kind of, maybe they seemed... Um, serious, overly serious then, but now, of course, there's a ridiculous camp element to them. They're so wonderfully dated and um, fabulous and lurid. 
but uh, I love them now more than I did when I was 12, which is, which is nice. <laughs> I found a whole batch of them in um, Cromford in a bookshop run by uh, a bookshop run by a nice man called Ian called Collector's Corner in Cromford that seems to have just about everything from my childhood. It's a tiny shop with a Cyberman outside and uh, it seems to contain many, many wonders. I've had several parcels <laughs> that I've ordered from Ian at Cromford in recent months, things that, um, that I needed to regather and get back in my life, like issues of Rampage Monthly or the Defenders comic, <clears throat> because um, I was missing them. I didn't have them. I lost all these things from um, my childhood over the years, going away to college and so on, and a lot of my time has been taken up by refinding these things, regathering them. Anyway, that's some more uh, bookshelves for you, mostly comics and annuals. Uh, crazy kid stuff, I guess. But what's funny about comic strips in particular for me is that they are seared into my head. When I turn the pages of um, things like The Defenders or The Incredible Hulk or Spider-Man or those old Star Trek comics, the pictures are still there in my head. I haven't seen them for 30 odd years. There must be something very particular about the way that uh, your mind works when you read things at a very early age. Anyway, that's it for today. Talk again soon. Come on, Socks. Sit with me.